Welcome to the UChem tutorial on atomic symbols. We're going to use this tutorial to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in a particular atomic species using the symbol for that atomic species. The form for atomic symbols is written in this particular form, and that is with X being the symbol for the element, all right, so um, SN for tin, or W for tungsten, or O for oxygen, and then the A and the Z are numbers, and those numbers help us determine the structure of the nucleus and the number of protons within the nucleus. So let's take a look at that a little bit closer by just looking at an example. This species is carbon-14, and carbon-14 is a specific symbol that describes a specific form of carbon. So let's dissect that symbol so we can understand the meaning of the symbol. So the number A, which is the number 14 for carbon, is the mass number. And the mass number allows us to examine the structure of the nucleus because it has the number of protons plus the number of nucleus neutrons. So it really gives the mass of that particular element. The electrons have negligible mass, and so the mass number is going to express the mass of that particular element. Also, we have the number below, and that's the atomic number. The atomic number Z represents the number of protons in a particular element. And so if you look on the periodic table, this is a cartoon of an entry for carbon, what you would see is a number above carbon, that number 6, and that's the atomic number, and then you'll see a number below that number, and that's the average atomic mass for all forms of carbon, not just the one that we're looking at, carbon-14. So be careful with that bottom number. We're going to use that number quite a bit, but it's not one that we use when we're dissecting this symbol. The symbol is a specific specific mass that it's giving, and it's that mass number, all right, number 14 for this type of carbon, that's important when we're dissecting the atomic symbol. So the atomic number is going to give the number of protons, all right, and we find that number of protons above the symbol for carbon in the periodic table. And so atomic number, number of protons, mass number, the sum of the number of protons and neutrons. So if I know the mass number and I know the atomic number, I can find the number of protons, and with a tiny little math, I can find the number of neutrons. So let's find the number of neutrons. So what we're going to do is take the mass number A minus the atomic number Z to give us the number of neutrons. And I can very cleverly use the atomic symbol to actually just do that subtraction right on the symbol. So if you go ahead and put a little subtraction sign there, just like you're doing a little arithmetic with that atomic symbol, you're going to take A minus Z and you're going to get the number of neutrons. So now with the symbol itself, I've shown you how to get the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and now we're going to work on the number of electrons. And we're going to use carbon-14 as an example. So let's use atomic symbols to find protons, neutrons, and now electrons. So here's our atomic symbol for carbon-14. We saw that its number of protons is equal to the atomic number 6. The number of neutrons, again, 14 minus 6, is going to be 8 neutrons. Now, the tricky thing here is how do I find the number of electrons? I've specified the structure of the nucleus, but now I haven't said anything about the number of electrons. I have, but you just don't see it. So let's take a look at a special area of the symbol that has nothing in it right now. And the nothing that's there is actually pretty significant. So that circled area that I have of above carbon doesn't have anything there. And that's actually significant because what that means is there's no charge on this form of carbon. If there were a charge, then you'd see a positive sign or a negative sign there with a number after it indicating the overall charge. So for this particular form of carbon, what I see is the number of electrons equals 6. Because the positive charges from the protons and the negative charges from the electrons, they cancel each other out, and I have no net charge on this particular atomic species. So just to recap, the nuclear structure, the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus is given all right, by that mass number and the atomic number. We use that to find the real structure of that nucleus if we want to know the number of protons and neutrons there. Now, 
If I want to look at the charge, I have to compare the number of protons with the number of electrons. And that's that little circled area that for this particular species has nothing there. And so the charge has to do with the difference, all right, between the number of protons and the number of electrons. So if I sum the number of negative and positive charges that come from the number of protons and electrons, those positively and negatively charged subatomic particles, I'm going to end up for this particular um, species, six of negative electrons, six positive protons, I get an overall charge of zero. So just be careful, these symbols actually give us quite a lot of information about nuclear structure as well as charge. All right, so let's do some practice. And the practice here, we're gonna find how many protons, neutrons, and electrons in the species written below. If you find it helpful to do practice without someone giving you the answer as you go along, just pause the video right now. And as you pause the video, what you're going to do is work out the, the answer to the problem and then unpause the video. And when you return to playing the video, then I'll work through the answers with you. And that allows you to work along with me. All right, so the two species we're gonna be looking at are potassium-40 and polonium-209. You'll notice potassium-40 is written just as I showed you on the previous page, and on the right I show you polonium-209, and I've changed things up a little bit for you. See if you can di dissect that polonium-209 to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons without any further description of that particular notation. Let's see how much you've learned and how much you can apply this to something new. Okay, let's start with potassium. This is potassium 40, so I can look and from A to Z. Remember, you write the alphabet from A to Z, you write atomic symbols from A to Z, where A is the mass number and Z is the atomic number. So A is gonna be 40, that's the number of protons plus neutrons, and Z is 19, that's the number of protons. So I can start there, the number of protons is 19. The number of neutrons is, remember, A minus Z, Okay, so I can take and subtract 40 minus 19 in that symbol, and I get 21. And the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons, because I don't see a charge written right to the right of the potassium symbol K. Now, over on the right, polonium 209, that's written a little different. And what we need to do then is just look up one other piece of information. The PO represents polonium. So we just look on the periodic table for PO. And PO is going to give me a atomic number of 84. That atomic number 84, okay, is going to be the number of protons. And the mass number is given 209. You always know what the mass number is because it's greater than the number of protons because the nucleus is always going to have some number of protons and neutrons. So the big number is always the mass number. The smaller number is always the atomic number. So let's go ahead and find the number of protons is 84. The number of neutrons is 125. I subtracted 84 from 209. And then the number of electrons, because there's no charge, is equal to the number of protons. So with this symbol, all right, just a couple of letters and a number, I can describe the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's helpful to have a periodic table to help you work this out a little bit, especially if the full atomic symbol is not written. The symbol as written on the right is very commonly used in typed text because you don't have to go about using the subscripts and superscripts. All right, so we're gonna extend this with another video that talks a little bit about ions and isotopes. It's another use of these atomic symbols to describe some other types of atoms, not just their elemental forms with no charge, but to describe some other types of atomic species. So stay tuned for that next and upcoming UChem tutorial.